So I gotta dig into some wiring today. Mass airflow sensor, the MAP sensor, the IAT sensor, those connectors are all different and I have to repin those. I know a lot of people probably balk at doing the wiring, uh, but I actually don't have a problem with that. I did this harness myself when I initially did the uh, swap and then I redid it and I redid it again and I've done it a few times. So I'm pretty proficient at, uh, proficient's a strong word. I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty comfortable doing my wiring. So a couple of differences, uh, as I mentioned before, the IAT is integrated with the uh, mass airflow sensor on both the LQ4 that I've got, which is an early LQ4, um, with the blue and red connectors on the PCM. Uh, in addition, the uh, LS3, LS7 card style mass airflow sensor that I've got has an integrated IAT. However, I'm not using that because the LSA has its own IAT, which is designated an IAT2. That's after boost to give you a more accurate reading of the temperature of the air actually going into the engine. So I'm gonna use that rather than using the IAT in the uh, card style math that I'm doing. Quick overview of my sensors. I think I mentioned this in a previous video, but uh, I am going from the uh, 85 millimeter circular style mass airflow sensor on my LQ4. That has the mass airflow reading as well as inlet air temperature reading. Uh, I'm going to an LS3 LS style card math and the reason for that is because I want to use four inch tubing on my inlet side and that is just a nice easy drop in. A uh, very popular mod for people to do especially when doing this LSA swap. So that also has an IAT in addition to the uh, mass airflow. Um, again, I'm not using that. I'm going to the IAT on the lid itself. So I'm gonna break out the three wires that go to the mass airflow sensor. I believe it's a five volt reference, uh, ground, and then sensor signal. And then there's a ground for the IAT and an IAT signal. Those two wires are gonna go to the IAT on the lid. The other three wires are gonna go to the mass airflow sensor uh, on the inlet side. Of, uh, of the engine. Then I'm swapping my one bar map to a three bar map, obviously, because I'm gonna have a boosted application. And the uh, three bar map is uh, GM sensor part number ending in 2525. You'll see that just about everywhere. Anybody doing a lot of these swaps, it's very popular. It also came with the lid, so obvious choice to use it. Now you can go out, you can find a pigtail harness or an adapter harness, which would make things loads easier. Problem with that is usually those are like 25, 30 bucks. If you're looking at three or four of them, you know, you start getting into uh, spending a ton more money. EFI Connection hooked me up with this IAT sensor and uh, MAP sensor. Both of those connectors were like $7. So I spent like 15 bucks total. Now, obviously I have to do the pinning myself and I also have to do the wiring myself. Um, but I felt that saving a little bit of cash uh, doing three or four of these sensors, you know, that adds up. So, you know, I like saving money. I like uh, doing stuff on my own and I don't like having the connector to connector to connector. So anyways, I'm gonna dig into this map sensor, show you guys how exactly I'm putting things together. Again, this is an early LQ4, so uh, your wiring might be different. You might even have a correct uh, map sensor connector. It might even be the right pins. You just need to lengthen the wires. That's awesome. But unfortunately, I had to change things around. Not a big deal, wasn't expensive, isn't gonna take a lot of time. Now before we dig in too far, I wanna show you the three wires on this map sensor. First up there on the right hand side, that's the gray wire. That is five volt reference. In the middle is green. That one is the signal wire. And then finally on the left hand side, because it's logical having orange and black, that is ground. Don't ask me why they use orange and black instead of say black and white. Uh, but that's the way that GM decided to do it. So I have to tap into all three of these for the three bar map. And in fact, pin one for the three bar map is the five volt reference. Pin two is the ground and pin three is the signal. So it looks like the green and the gray are gonna have to change. Okay, so I've got my new map sensor connector. I don't know if you can see it or not. There we go. So you see on the right hand side, there's a number one 
nothing in the middle, and then the number three. So per the documentation that I found on Vaporworks website, specific to the LSA, number one, five volt reference goes there, that's the gray wire. Number two is low reference or ground, which is orange and black, and then number three is the signal wire, which is light green. So on the other side of the engine, I connected the Vaporworks wires for the MAP sensor. So that means we should be good to go as far as boost referencing and as far as the MAP sensor goes. Now here's the mass airflow sensor connector for an early LQ4. So my engine came out of a 2000 Silverado 2500. This was a uh, six liter LQ4. You see this connector, uh, it has five wires. It's got black followed by tan, followed by black and white, followed by pink, followed by yellow. Those are low reference, ground, tan, IAT, black and white is ground, pink is ignition one voltage, and yellow is the MAF sensor, so mass airflow sensor. Now, of those, uh, black, which is the low reference, and tan, which is the IAT signal, those are both for the inlet air temperature sensor. So I'm gonna pull those two first and run those separate directly to the new IAT sensor on this side of the brick. So I'll run the rest to this pigtail that I bought off eBay. Now, the bad thing about this, although it was only $10, is it doesn't have any letters on the back side. Now, I did some searching, and the LS3, LS7 style card mass airflow sensor also has five connections. Again, I'm only using three. However, those five are, in order from A to E, they are yellow, which is mass airflow signal, B is black and white, which is ground, C is pink, which is ignition one voltage, and then I didn't write down the colors for the IAT, however, Generally tan is for the IAT, and then I guess they used purple for this. I don't know if that's the stock color or what, but uh, <clears throat> I am assuming that both of these, because my reference says D and E are for the IAT, I'm gonna pull those out and use only these three. So if you're like me, when you wire something up, you assume that you just push the connectors into the connector body. Um, I found out the hard way that is not the case for these IAT connectors. These are actually a pull-through design. So you take the uh, pin with a short piece of wire and you pull it through. I don't know why or who decided that that was a good idea. I understand why you might do that because it can't push back like a push-in design can. Uh, however, what this does is it forces you to essentially wire it through and then make your terminations, your connections, and then pull them back in. Now, in addition, this seal right here has to go through, so don't forget the seal at all. So again, I found out the hard way that you gotta pull these things through. So now what I have to do, because my wires weren't long enough for this little escapade, I actually am gonna need to solder these together. So, um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this through. Hopefully it works out all right. Now, there's one more thing to note. There are only two wires on this IAT sensor. However, you wanna make sure that you have it hooked up correctly. You can see there's an A and a B. So cavity A is for the black wire, which is your ground or your low reference. Cavity B is for the tan wire, which is for the IAT signal. Make sure you don't get those backward because you might have some issues when you go to tune the car. It might have some funky readings or something like that. Um, so just remember, pull these through when you are making a new IAT connection, and also B goes to the signal, A goes to the ground. So I'm gonna solder these back on and my IAT sensor is connected. All right, so there we have it. That's the basic overview of the sensors you need with the LSA. Again, you see over here, we've got the IAT, We've got the three bar map. And then down here, I've got the LS3 style MAF. Now I wired that up, but when I talked to the tuner, they actually told me that we were gonna do speed density for this particular tune. In speed density, you don't need a mass airflow sensor. 
So I do still have the uh, connector, which is now hidden underneath the supercharger itself. I got this from ICT Billet. I went ahead and powder coated that black, just like my inlet. So um, before you wire up the mass airflow, uh, maybe talk to a tuner or something like that or determine if you do want to go to mass airflow or if you want to go to speed density. Go with speed density, like I mentioned, you don't have to worry about the mass airflow. You can just delete those wires completely. So anyways, I'm going to the dyno soon with this. I've got the base tune in here so I can actually drive it. I've been driving it around. Just some small issues that I've had, you know, hunting at idle and, and uh, hanging up at idle and stuff, but that's to be expected um, without doing a full tune. So uh, I think the next video, we're just gonna see what kind of numbers this bad boy makes and uh, how much fun this thing is to blast around on the street. I can tell you I've romped on it just a little bit and uh, it's definitely uh, pulls like a freight train, that's for sure. And that's without even having a full on tune. So I've been trying to keep my foot out of it for sure, but it's awfully tempting with this supercharger under the hood. Anyways, I'll talk to you guys soon. See ya.